right, today we talk about these two. I have a Magpul bipod here, the new one that just came out, 2018, and uh, got it on a bolt gun. This is the Savage. If you haven't watched a review for this yet, this is the Savage 12 FE. Go check that out. This is a $219 Miracle rifle. Uh, extremely impressive. And uh, watch that review if you want to hear more about it. But I'm running that bipod on here. It's not exactly uh, set up for it in the way that I have a bipod adapter on a swivel stud here. And so I had to put an adapter onto, or like kind of a quick release adapter onto the Magpul bipod because it has flat head only portions, two of them, not a quick uh, detach like your Atlas and some of those other things. Uh, right off the bat, I'm gonna say that's, that's a huge fail. I don't know what in the world Magpul was thinking in releasing something like this that is proprietary, that you can't have a, a quick detach on it. Furthermore, it barely snugs up onto the lug that's available here. Um, thankfully, I, I was able to make that work, but otherwise I would have been dremeling a little bit of steel away to make that work. So really frustrating that the initial uh, piece couldn't just attach on there. I had to use an adapter, but I do like to take it off sometimes and put on another rifle. So that's cool. Just a black model there. And Coyote Tan version with the AR. Uh, I've been shooting just a little bit so far. I've only got 10 rounds uh, down the pipe today for, through this rifle, actually, just to confirm it's zero. Um, interestingly enough, I'll tell you, I should review this rifle. Uh, this is a Palmetto 20 inch upper, uh, kind of the standard, maybe government profile or whatever. And uh, between ammos, there's so many good quality ammos out there that other ARs have liked. And I'll just say, for what it's worth, this rifle consistently shoots the uh, 855. Uh, the penetrator or green tips you know it shoots that the best and it just amazes me because it's not like a real high quality round but it shoots relatively tight so what i'm going to do is somebody left up some targets downrange which i love because i didn't even have to use my targets or my staples so there's two targets i can shoot on this is about a three quarter or a little under rifle with that uh 855 sometimes it's under it's, it's hard for me to tell so i just say three quarter or under it's somewhere in there um and uh, that's with the UTG bipod. That's typically what I had ran, run in the past. Uh, check out my reviews on that UTG 360 bipod. And we're just gonna see if this keeps up with it or does better. Um, I'll be honest about my, my shot placement and if I think I pulled them or anything like that. But we'll just run through. I don't have a huge amount of ammo with me today. Just give you a little look at what this bipod is like when it's functioning. So I'll go uh, five round group at 100 yards. We'll see what that looks like on this guy. And then I know my, my Savage is a, a 3 8 group shooting rifle for sure with the right ammo. Um, and I'll, I'll do a five shot group with that on the other target that's left open. And we'll just see if these bipods are keeping up with the UTG at the very least, or if they seem easier or better. I'll give a little feedback on that. And then we're gonna move over to 200 and 250 yards, which is the most that I have at my range right here. I, I know it probably gets boring seeing people shoot at point blank distances, but that's just what I got to work with right now uh, over here in Scani. So this uh, this bipod, there's a lot of stuff I can talk about, a lot of things I can share about, but first let's just shoot it and we'll talk after. All right. So a little bit about the rifle. Um, you know, it's just regular old AR, I guess. It's got uh, a CMC flat trigger in it. It's a three and a half pound trigger. Um, we're shooting penetrator, 62 grain. Midway USA bag, pretty cheap. It's a cylinder bag, and I actually kind of like it with the AR the best. Um, I'm not shooting off the most optimum surface. It's like kind of a slippery carpet, but just gotta make do with what you got. Make sure the range is clear here. Using an SWFA 10X, actually. So nothing premium, but it certainly gets the job done. All right, find my target here. It's a bullseye. Maybe kind of a poor recoil actually.
can't remember if I shot four shots or five shots. And that's go back and watch the footage. Oh, right. fingers getting cold. <clears throat> Excuses, I'm sure. It's about 30 degrees out, so it's actually warmer than it has been many other times. But truth is, your fingers just get cold after a while. Touching a lot of metal and brass. And that probably plays a you know a scientific factor into your group size at some degree, but I don't know, excuses all day. Just gotta get out and shoot and try it. So I'm using 50 grain Fiocchi with the uh, Palmer tips. And typically these do shoot real well. Again, go watch my other reviews on uh, the rifle and this ammo combination. Pulled that shot a little bit. Felt that. A little jerky on the trigger on that one. Again, there's no warm up here. All right, range is clear. Um, I'm not real happy with the group I just shot, but let's go take a look at it. We'll talk about it. There's really just not room for excuses in this. Um, that was my warm up, you know, it is what it is. Shooting the right ammo, it should have been a 3 8 group. I have a feeling it's a little bigger than 3 8 but it is what it is, you know. Suck it up, I guess, is what I'll have to do. Let's go take a look at it and we'll just talk about it a little bit then we'll move over to at least uh 200 250. all right so i'll try to be brief but <clears throat> it turns out that i shot six shots with the ar so i'm an idiot i was just so focused on that reticle i wasn't even paying attention to some other things which actually caused me a little bit of problems but here's what i got that's a three-fourths inch group with the six shots um so yeah i I don't exactly know which one's got extras here, but I, I definitely shot six shots and there's no hits around the target. So in here, there are six shots. My guess is by looking at, oh yeah, okay. Looking at the back of the target, I can tell that actually, oh, this surprises me that a fair amount went through this hole. So we had four hits in this little spot right there, which really impresses me. Um, Cause that's pretty tight, but yeah, there's one, two, three, four. So four impacts up here and then two down here, which is, I would say this is much tighter than I'm usually shooting with that rifle. I do not claim that it usually shoots that tight. Um, so may, maybe I should say that that's uh, impressive because it's, you know, I had shot 10 rounds for the whole day before that and it was with the AR, just getting warmed up on that trigger. It's a three and a half pound trigger, single stage, and I'm used to sh shooting, you know, kind of two stage triggers for accuracy anyways. And so... Uh, this was very good for six shots for me, um, three three quarter inch group, and uh, you know I, I could even almost maybe see this being a flyer, maybe I don't know. the The core of the group is up here. That's really cool. So for the AR with that bipod, I would say I did better 
than usual. Like I said, it's it's three fourths or under with that ammo, uh, three fourths inch at 100 yards or under, and so you know it, at the very least it kept up with what I expected. It is a three fourths inch group, and there just happens to be a nice cluster right in there. Could be a chance, uh, could be that the bipod helped me do better. I, I noticed with shooting the gas gun. Um, because the recoil is is more obviously than you're gonna get with like a bolt gun in 223, which is it's it's laughable recoil. I get it, but there's something there in the gas gun to deal with and compensate for, and it does bounce. You know, it hops around, and uh, I wasn't shooting loaded in grass or rocks or anything like that. I was on this slippery slippery carpet that I had out there. That was probably not a good choice on my part. So my apologies. You know, fingers get cold. There's another excuse, but it is what it is. And uh, I may have rushed it just a little bit overall, but I could feel a good amount of tension when I loaded the bipod. I've seen some critique already of people that they didn't like the way that that bipod loaded, but I far prefer the way that bipod loads compared to the, the other cheaper bipods that are out there um, under a hundred bucks. You know, I, I really do like that uh, feature pretty well. Um, as far as attachment, again, it's like proprietary, you know, there's the two uh, flat heads on there, so I don't have a quick detach on it, so it's just going to stay on there. Um, I had length in the legs, so I could run a 30 rounder in there, and certainly it can go plenty tall. You could run a 40 rounder mag in there if you wanted to. You'd just be sitting up really awkward. I prefer to run 20 rounders in that thing, uh, but the 30 rounder was just fine, and, and obviously the group was not unacceptable. You know, most guys shooting PSA rifles at 100 yards, they're probably going to look for one inch or maybe three quarter inch, but for a 20 inch rifle, perfectly happy. It's not even a thick barrel. It's a one in, one in seven twist, kind of standard AR barrel. You know, that thing was super cheap. I probably got that for 229 bucks or something. So I'm pretty happy. I'd say that's not bad uh, for a rifle that especially doesn't have a bolt that's uh, timed, you know, perfectly and all that. Uh, I don't know. Maybe the stars align, but maybe it's just a decent rifle. I should review that rifle soon. That's what I got. Moving on with the Savage. I'm actually not happy with this. This is a half inch group. Um, center to center half inch group I should mention and just not happy with that there's one shot over here if you can see that I would guess because I've, I've shot this rifle so much I've just especially the last six months I've shot this rifle a lot and I can tell that it is 100% zeroed perfectly and um, so I'm a little bit high and this one to the right I would guess that this was the shot that I said I didn't feel like a great shot bad recoil. I think that guy went over here. The rest of it, if you were to actually just take that shot out and move it over, it would be back to a 3 8 inch group, which is what I claim the rifle shoots. So not super happy with that, but uh, as far as the bipod goes now on a bolt gun, it does sit up a little higher than I like, but sometimes you're in a, there's an advantage to that, um, especially when you're shooting over weeds or uh, unlevel ground, which I do a lot of shooting on unlevel ground. And uh, I just end up having to get that guy a little higher anyways. I'm not always shooting off a mat, you know. And so it's it's pretty decent. The recoil impulse, again, I can load that rifle very consistently. It's not awkward like that UTG was. That was so inconsistent. It's amazing that I ever pulled out, you know, decent groups under that, uh, with that bipod. So for this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say certainly a pass and uh, keeping with the status quo. And for comfort and usability, it's definitely better. It's light years better. Is it worth 100 bucks? I, I'm not going to say just yet. Let's go shoot at 200 and 250. And uh, maybe I'll just wrap up the review and give you my intermittent thoughts, you know, just one month in. I know that's not a lot. I've probably got 500 rounds on these bipods so far, um, cumulatively, so that's not a lot. But it's pretty easy to deduce information after you've been shooting on bipods for a while of what you kind of like, what you kind of don't. It won't be a long-term review, but it'll give you an idea of whether you even want to poke your head, <laughs> you know, in this direction or not. So let's go over there. We'll shoot a couple groups at uh, 200. It looks like we got about a 10 mile an hour wind right now. That's crosswind. So that's not great, and it's not even consistent. It's like back and forth, real blustery. So I don't know how much audio you'll get out of this, but you can at least see the groups when we're done.
super study. I've been shooting for several hours. I can't feel my fingers anymore, they're super numb. Um, the sun's going down, so I'm gonna shoot a little more, wrap it up, and we'll talk about these bipods. I'll try to throw five out at uh, a couple hundred yards here real quick on an eight incher. Again, I can't feel my fingers, so I can't even feel that bolt when I'm grabbing it. Let's talk about it. All right, so first of all, a while ago I had talked about doing a 10 and a half inch review for a Palmetto State Armory uh, pistol, and you'll notice that I have a different upper on here. I had a buddy who also wanted a pistol. I decided I wanted something M-Lock. Um, I really like that A2 front sight, uh, just the durability of it, but I realized I'm not using it. It's a really tough gas block, but I wasn't using it. I was using, uh, you know, a Vortex 1X. So I ended up selling the Vortex 1X again. That's the second one I've sold. And uh, the upper. And I replaced it with this. And actually, accuracy-wise so far, precision um, capability, I would say it's it's probably a good trade-off for me. Uh, this seems to shoot a little tighter. Maybe a lot tighter. Um, I'm getting about three-quarter inch groups at 100 yards uh, for five-shot groups. And so I'm super happy with that. Uh, that's just with 62 grain ammo, I believe. Penetrators again. So this is what I'm actually gonna review. And you'll notice I have a bipod on there right now and a primary arms 5X. And so this kind of replaced my 16 inch AR that I had sold off a while back. I still got a 20 inch. And uh, this is a, a pretty good little pistol. Seems to do kind of everything I want it to and with a 5X. And if you use, uh, oh, what's it called? My ballistic program, uh, Strelic Pro, fuse that, you can definitely adjust the reticle and know where you need to hold. I was shooting it at 200 and 250 yards today, and as long as I can see my target, definitely can hit it. Uh, pretty precise. I really like, um, whatever the name of that program is, Strelic Pro, Starlock Pro, I think it's Strelock Pro. Having a moment where I can't remember. Great program, works with the ACSS reticle. It's like 12 bucks if you wanna buy the app on your phone. And it gets you some good data as long as you have something to provide. Um, but this pistol, I shot this out at 250 yards, and I was getting about four inch groups typically. Um, not amazing, but I was running this. It's it's definitely better than some ARs do. In fact, I've shot with plenty of guys, and uh, this little thing at 250 yards shooting a four inch group is actually doing okay. It's not it's not a two and a half inch group. It's not MOA size, but a four and a half or a four inch group is is pretty good. Um, so let me just talk through a couple targets for you. So with a 20 inch AR today, um, shooting at 250 yards, this is not a, I don't know, it's not, not too impressive of a target. But actually the thing that I would say is that even with this, compared to the UTG that I would throw on that in the past, um, this is at least keeping up with it, with the gas gun. I did slip a couple times during those shots, and I almost wonder if it's these two tighter shots over here, because I slipped very consistently in the trigger pull. So there's two over here, they're close, and about a, a two inch um, group would make sense at 250 yards with that AR. So that's my guess anyways, but at the very least it's acceptable um, performance with the, the bipod on the AR. Um, so good job Magpul, you made a uh, bipod that works well with an AR, you know. and. Um, then with the bolt gun, this is a, uh, I believe that's a one and a half inch group, and I have a flyer down here, which brings it down. This is what two and a half inches looks like. So that's a one MOA group. If you count my flyer down there, which is clearly a flyer, if you throw it up there, you know, definitely shooting um, a little under half MOA. So pretty happy with that. Again, I've, I've shot that tight in the past though with my other bipod, so I wouldn't say it's better necessarily um, 200 yard group so this is what the 20 inch AR and uh, not stellar I would say it's, it's okay it's definitely okay that right there um, I did measure it earlier and it was two and two inches and a quarter group so it's a little over MOA actually so 
my bad, I guess, but it kept up an okay group. For most people's ARs, again, they'll be happy with that. I just know that that AR can do better. Um, but it, it certainly uh, hit the target, and, and actually it was this way when I was shooting it. I had a couple low ones down there too, just a pair. That's 200 yards. And then here's my 200 yard target from the Savage. And this target is, um, it was 5 16 inch. And these are all five shot groups, by the way. So 5 16 inches at 200 yards, that's five shots. You know, that's that's pretty good. You're, you're shooting right around quarter MOA because half inch at 200 yards is a quarter inch, or a quarter MOA <laughs> grouping, if I can talk. So I'm pretty happy with, you know what I'm seeing there. Like I said, three eighths is typically what I'm shooting. So this is falling right in line with that. Um, very happy with the performance there with the bipod. And actually, I would say uh, overall with the AR, the thing that I noticed is so these just kind of flip down, just pressure. You don't have to hit any button or anything. The thing I noticed with the AR is when I extend the legs out a little bit, if I want to run a 30 rounder like that, I can definitely feel more flex in it. Um, and that just the, the recoil of a gas gun gave me a little bit more trouble, so it is what it is. It wasn't, it wasn't quite as easy. And one of the things I didn't love was actually, um, do this for you so you can see. On the underside here, there's a tensioning piece, which helps with um, panning, the panning of the bipod, because this can pan and tilt. Um, and so, you know, certainly you could set it up Maybe you can see better like this. It'll it'll tilt, you know, really, really well. Uh, it's, it's awesome, I really like the tilt on it. But the panning is just like a little bit loose and it almost seems like it loosens up a little bit. I, I shot for a long time today, I shot for five hours. So then I end up tightening it just a little bit. Again, not the end of the world, but we're dealing with a bipod that's, you know, above $100 generally. So what do you expect out of it, I guess? Um, I expect it to stay tight. That's what I expect for a hundred dollar plastic and metal bipod, especially coming from Magpul because Magpul does put out good products. And so, um, with the AR, you know, it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I'm not upset about my purchase at all. I don't want to sell it or get rid of it. Um, it definitely replaces the UTG bipod for me. Um, certainly is faster, certainly is, um, you know, kind of user friendly. Um, the bipod itself isn't as tough I don't think as that UTG that one was was all aluminum and uh, this one just having a lot of polymer in it it's real lightweight but it's not as tough I don't think so there's a couple things I noticed with a bolt gun now what I noticed with the bolt gun is uh, the height is just a little bit tall but I really 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 like the way that it feels when I load the bipod um, I was, was pretty efficient today I, I all my targets today were sub MOA easily but most of them were like right around uh, between half inch and three quarter inch at 250 yards. Um, like uh, I think I showed one earlier, or I maybe have one flyer, sometimes two flyers, but I can tell that they're grouping really tight. And I want to say that I'm actually shooting a little better with the Magpul bipod because of consistency. And so that's kind of the big thing with bipods. If it's not consistent, you're going to be bothered with it. It's going to be annoying. Um, the Magpul bipod seems to me to have a lot of capability to be consistent. Um, it's not as snazzy as an Atlas. It doesn't have all the features that some of the more expensive bipods have. And I'm kind of cool with that because I don't want to pay $300 for a bipod right now. It's just not in the cards for me. So as far as um, a great middle of the road bipod that doesn't break the bank but gets a lot of things done, this is definitely something that's good to go. Um, we'll see about a long-term review if anything breaks or falls apart. You know, that can happen with hardware. Uh, we'll see about that, but so far with these two bipods, you know, we're looking at about 700 round count now that I've had on the two of them. I'm I'm digging it. I'm sold. Um, Magpul, if you're watching this, you need to come up with some sort of quick detach version. It's ridiculous that it doesn't have a quick detach in the first place. That is a fail. Um, flexibility is good. No worries about that. Rigidity is fine. The feet on wood surfaces and cement surfaces, I tried it on a few different. I tried it on ice. I tried it on grass, I tried it on sand, wood, and cement, um, all today. And I'd say it's a little slippery. These pyramids on the bottom, they're okay, um, but they're just not great, especially on a harder surface. But typically I try not to shoot off those harder surfaces anyways. Most people wouldn't try. 
It'd just be nice if it did grip a little better. Um, it did slip, it popped out a little bit. You might see that in some of the footage with the gas gun especially. But if I got loaded into the sand or the grass, it did really good. It was awesome. I was very locked in. Um, any Anything that's unimpressive in the shooting today is, is going to have to ride on me because actually the bipod's pretty awesome. So that's my two cents is Gun Toten Minnesotan. Hey, go ahead and like, share, subscribe, do all that kind of stuff. And uh, I hope to have a review out pretty soon comparing this versus my buddies. He's got almost the same thing, just a couple key differences in the engine room. So we'll talk about that. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.